Techwani with Desert Financial, and I'm joined here today with Jada Mangahas of ASU Women's Gymnastics. Welcome, Jada. Thanks for having me. So happy to have you here today and spend some time getting to know each other. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what inspired you to pursue gymnastics? So I have been doing gymnastics since I was two years old, so about 19 years. Um, I have been on the ASU gymnastics scene. This is my fourth year, and I pursued gymnastics, I think, as just a family, you know, activity. When we, when we were little, me and my brothers went to mommy and me classes. We just wanted to tumble around on the mats, and it just stuck with me. It was something that I loved, and my love for it grew throughout the years of my gymnastics. Um, I kind of always wanted to pursue college gymnastics. I saw the older girls in there kind of pursuing it when I was young, and I was like, this is what I want to do. And as time went on, I just enjoyed it more and more. So I strive for that for that college gymnastics goal. That's incredible. You've made it so far in your career. I think it's incredible that you're doing gymnastics at ASU. What would you consider to be your most significant accomplishment to date with gymnastics? Um, I'd say other than getting a scholarship to Arizona State, um, just getting my career highs on every event has been such an amazing achievement for me. I've always wanted to get higher than a 9.9 .9 on events that I've competed, and being able to do that has been like such a great success for me because I feel like I, that's something that I've worked hard for for, for a while, and um, it's just been so fun to be able to contribute that way to my team and help my team get such high scores in the past few years and make great improvements in rankings and so on. Yeah. I bet your parents were so proud when they heard you got a 9.9. .9. Yeah, they, they were so excited. Um, first few meets of freshman year, they... Um, would call and text me every time that I would do something great like that and it just made me feel so happy and proud that I could make them proud since they you know sacrificed so much for, for me and my sport my whole life um, just being able to make them proud no matter what you know good or bad they're always proud of me but you know just having that smile on their faces and when they get to come watch my meets in ASU it's just so awesome to to show them that I've been working really hard and that um, all of it's been paying off. So that's awesome. It sounds like you've shared that excitement with your parents and your family. Um, what's it feel like to share that 9.9 .9 with your team? It's so awesome. Just being able to see their excitement too and kind of just run to them and, and celebrate and just be so happy for it is definitely something that's so worth it. You know, all the hard work we go through in preseason and everything, so worth it to, to be at a meet and have those great achievements and um, just have that just happy moment because you know we work really hard and you know we always have good days and bad days but you know to achieve those those things and do it with your team those people that you that I compete for it's mm -hmm. just so great to to be like hey I did this for you guys and like I'm so I'm so happy and and they're so happy for me also so that's awesome so great. yeah so tell me about that team dynamic you know I know with gymnastics obviously you know you're competing by yourself when you're you know doing your routines but a big piece of it is that team collaboration and that that growth that you experience from that how do you perceive the importance of that team mindset when you guys are competing mm -hmm. I think teamwork is so important you know like you said gymnastics is an individual sport mm -hmm. and you know until college you know you compete completely by yourself you know you're going for your own goals and once you get to college, it's all about that team score. So I think it's so important to have those teammates that support you and have your back and kind of compete almost for them. I compete to make my team better. And, you know, I think they do the same for me. And, you know, good days and bad days, they always are there to support me, have my back. And it's great to have those people behind you because at the end of the day, they are my closest friends. So mm -hmm. it's really cool to share those experiences with them. and you know, work together for a unified goal because it's it's hard to do things alone, so it's so yeah. much easier to have those people to support you and do it with because, you know, when practice gets really tough, it's like, hey, I'm doing it with you, like, we got this, we're going to do it together, and it just, you know, I feel like it transfers into life too because, you know, it's so much easier to work together with someone else. 100%. Mm -hmm. I think in life, just having that team mindset and being willing to collaborate with people, whether it's you know, doing things with friends or in the workplace will really help you get far. Mm -hmm. What's one of the greatest things you've learned about being on a team at ASU? 
The best thing I've learned about being on a team is kind of being Mm open-minded because, you know, being on a team is great because you have so many different opinions and so many different perspectives on, you know, whether it be gymnastics, life, you know, everything. So it's really cool to see all those different perspectives. You know, everyone grew up in completely different places on my team. So it's cool to see what they think about, you know, our sport and the way we should go about it and the way we should support each other. And I think we have so many team meetings about these things, like how can we be better as one? Because, you know, we come from so many different areas of life and so many different ages that it's it's cool to see what different collaboration we can have to kind of have those joint team goals and how we can be better as a team, whether it be competing at practice. And it almost helps us, you know, get closer as friends, too, because we learn so much about each other and it's it's cool to work together like that as friends and teammates. So um, I think that being on a team has been like such a blessing for me because I feel like I've learned so much. That's great. Mm -hmm. So given that you are so busy with sports, with school, with life, what would you say is, uh, could you walk us through a typical day in your life right now? Okay, yeah. Definitely busy, so (laughs) this will be a lot. But um, so this past fall, I started working an internship. Um, On top of sports and school? Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. So I want to be a physical therapist um, after I graduate, kind of go into grad school and everything. So I started an internship at a physical therapy clinic. So I would start my morning working there at 6 in the morning. Wow. Yeah. And then so I'd work there for about three and a half, four hours. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I'd go to class. Usually I'd have one or two classes in early afternoon. Um. And then right from there, I'll usually go to treatment before practice, so kind of just getting worked on before practice. And then practice time, which is about four hours per day. So we'll, we'll usually start practice around 1 p.m. and then um, finish around 4, and then we'll do either a weights workout or conditioning afterward for an hour. Um, so that ends around like 5 p.m. And then depending on what happens at night, sometimes we'll have SAC meetings, and other athletic events so I usually go to that right after and then yeah I usually get home around maybe 6 or 7 p.m. and start my homework or you know try to chillax for the rest of the week the the night but how much homework do you have a night do you feel like you have are restricted on the kind of classes you're able to take because of balancing that school schedule um definitely restricted for class schedules just because of you know practice times and everything um Sometimes I'll have conflicts with practice in class where I'll have to be, you know, a little later, you know, change our practice times just a little bit. But um, definitely restricted, but I usually can figure it out um, throughout my years, work with our coaching staff and our academic staff. Um, they, they're always really helpful with that. Um, but at night, I'd say, like, I don't have too, too much. I usually try to spread it out throughout the week like I said plan it out so that I can you know have a little bit of free time at night but mostly spending my time studying and kind of looking at what I need to do try to try to only do like one or two assignments a night so I'm not (laughs) overloading myself but yeah I definitely say that um I have a good amount of work to do like at least throughout the week I believe it well it seems like we've learned a lot about your school schedule you know your passions with your career and your future with gymnastics but tell us a bit about you you know outside of gymnastics what do you love? What are some of your favorite hobbies or things you like to do in your free time other than taking a break, which I'm sure is much needed? Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course. Um, I definitely love to bake. I'm a huge baker. I love to just bake for my friends. I usually try to look up some fun recipes and, and I'll just surprise them. I'm like, hey guys, just so you know, I'm making you dessert tonight and they get so excited. Um, that's definitely something that I love doing. Obviously, hanging out with my friends. I love to go do fun things. We love playing beach volleyball, and well, we try to play in the summer in Arizona, but you know that doesn't always work out because it's 120 oh, yeah. degrees. <laughs> but um, we love playing beach volleyball, pickleball, like different things like that. Um, I love to go to the beach. I love to tan, things like that. Definitely summer activities, oh, yeah. but um, still in the winter, love to hang out with friends, do do a lot of stuff with them. Um, but yeah, I spend a lot of time with other people. So <laughs> pretty much what I do, but definitely a big baker. I like to read sometimes too, um, especially in the winter time. Just like sitting on the couch and <laughs> cozying up with a book was is always nice. But yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do. I'll admit I don't find the time as much as I would love yeah, to. But same. reading is an incredible hobby. Yeah. Now I want to shift gears a little bit. Ask you something fun. So if you could be any animal for one day, what animal would you be? 
Could probably be a dog. Um, definitely a lap dog. <laughs> not one, of, not like a chihuahua or anything energetic. I'd say lap dog. Um, again, I just want to cozy up on the couch. You know, I feel like dogs have such a chill life, and mm-hmm. you know, they always have owners that are like loving up on them, giving them treats and stuff. So I feel like that would be a fun thing to be. I agree with that. It would be so cool to know what they think, right? When That's true. Looking at you, I have a, a ten pound Yorkie, and she's always just staring me down. I always wonder <laughs> what is she thinking right yeah. now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm probably sound crazy the way I'm talking to you, <laughs> like right? a little baby. <laughs> So shifting back to gymnastics a little bit, you know, how do you get into the right mindset and prepare yourself for a competition, especially when you may be tired or know that you have a lot going out with, on with school? Mm. How do you get into that special headspace? Yeah, so I'm definitely a very mental gymnast, so I think if my mindset's right, I do my best. Um, so for me, especially on, like, meet day itself, I like to, you know, calm myself down in the mornings because usually we compete at night, so... I'll usually spend my mornings trying to calm myself. Sometimes I'll, like, meditate or um, journal a little bit to kind of get myself in the right headspace. Um, A lot of times me and my teammates will write each other notes before meets to kind of motivate each other. So that definitely helps a lot to kind of get that support from your teammate to show, like, hey, they they know you've been working hard. They they know you can do this. Like, you got this. Um, So it's definitely getting my mindset right is, like, number one for me, especially on the day of a meet. Um... I usually journal to myself to, you know, remind myself of those little things that I have to remember going into a meet so I don't overwhelm myself um, or get too nervous because, you know, nerves can always get the best of you. Um, And then other than that, like having fun, especially like right before a meet, like I like to, you know, pump up the music, get myself hyped up, you know get excited because I think when we have fun as a team like we do so well like if we're if we're all nervous and in our heads you know Uh we can you know not do the gymnastics we've been practicing so I think just getting excited having fun dancing around is uh keeps us relaxed and ready to go so that's cool so with your teammates do you guys find that you know if one of you or you know maybe a handful of you feel a little bit more nervous and they're showing that on the outside are you vocal about helping each other to kind of pep each other up before a competition. Yeah, definitely. I think even in practice, like mm-hmm. we, if we see one of our teammates struggling or feeling a little negative, we can kind of tell. So it kind of, you could sh- it shows in their gymnastics, it shows on their face. So a lot of times at meets, if someone seems a little nervous, we always make sure we go up to them and be like, hey, like, we got this. We're doing this together. It's not just you out there. Like, we're all going to be out there together. Like, we got you. You're going to do awesome. Kind of like p- pump them up, get them motivated because, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, it's it's all of us together. It's not just them. Even though they go by themselves on the event, like we're all there, like supporting them, and we we win things together. So we have to remind them that, like, hey, we're here for you. Like, whatever you need, we got you. Like, we're gonna help you get through this. If you're nervous, like, we'll hype you up a little bit if you need <laughs> it. But that you know, at the end of the day, it's it's our team together in the arena. It's we don't have to worry about anything else except for ourselves. So it's usually. Um, easy to to get them back in the back in the groove so. yeah, that's pretty cool I can tell you that team collaboration will definitely help in work life for sure yeah. you know since everything is is centered around that um want to ask something kind of fun and crazy so you know it sounds like for the most part meets go well you guys are really supportive of each other have you ever had an embarrassing moment or something crazy happen at a competition <laughs> yes I have actually <laughs> um my sophomore year I was doing a bar routine and I know this is like it was like a scary crash for people but for me it was funny at, at afterward during it it was not funny because I was so embarrassed but I was doing my bar routine and I did like my release move so I let go of the high bar and then was going to catch it again and I caught it and I thought I was holding onto the bar and then mm-hmm. I didn't and I like pinged off down into the floor and landed like in between the bars and everyone was like oh my gosh but, like, we, I was fine. I didn't, you know, hurt myself or anything. It was kind of just, like, a crazy accident. It wasn't yeah. like a it, – it wasn't like I was expecting it. I was like, oh, my gosh, did I just let go of the bar? Like, <laughs> it was so random. And I just remember at the time I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Like, who does that? Like, it wasn't just a normal fall. It was, like, so dramatic. I, like, slammed on the floor <laughs> so hard. Um, and I just remember everyone was like, oh my gosh, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. I'm just embarrassed. Like I'm more embarrassed than like hurting or anything. Um, so that was just like such an embarrassing time. Like my coaches were just making sure I was okay. I was like, honestly, like it didn't hurt at all. I'm just embarrassed. 
And, you know, I once I got over it, I kind of rewatched the video and yeah. kind of made fun of myself. And now everyone everyone still talks about it. So if that tells you how embarrassing it is, then, yeah, it's kind of just been a meme since then. That's so, amazing. Did you yeah. find it hard to pick yourself back up after that happened and kind of regain that composure to keep on going? Yeah, it definitely was tough. I, I was like, dang, I can't believe that just happened. Like, what am I going to do? But I was like, I have to finish this routine. Like, I'm still mm -hmm. competing and everything. So. And I just remembered, like, I don't want to give up on my team or anything, even though that was crazy and embarrassing. So it was definitely hard, but I think having all the people come up to me right away and be like, are you okay? Like, can you finish th this routine? Like, you got this. It kind of helped me, like, regroup and reset my mind to finish the routine and finish the meet. So. That's good. That support makes a big difference, mm -hmm, right? Definitely. What are some of the big, you know, the biggest challenges that you've faced in your journey, whether it was setback from you know getting hurt or something like that and you know if you face that how did you overcome it mm -hmm. so I'd say that I haven't had any major major injuries knock on wood um, through my gymnastics career um, but I think through injury it's definitely set me back a lot mentally mm -hmm. because you know you have an injury and then you kind of see your teammates progressing forward but you feel like you're going backwards kind of thing and I think the hardest thing for me throughout my career has been kind of those mental setbacks mm -hmm. thinking to myself like am I ever going to get there or like am I ever going to reach those goals so I think I've had a lot of moments in gymnastics where I've been really hard on myself in that way like not giving myself the time to recover from an injury or giving myself time to you know better get better through preseason or through mm -hmm. the months before season um, and kind of just putting a lot of pressure on myself to be perfect, which, I mean, my sport strives to be perfect, so it's yeah. a little difficult. So um, kind of just reminding myself that, you know, I'm working hard and I'm going to get there, but I have to give myself time to get to my goals and everything, and that it's not always going to be my best day. Like, you always make mistakes. You're human. Like, you can't always be perfect, even though gymnastics is you're supposed to be perfect. Um, I think definitely a big struggle is just, you know, having that mental mental toughness throughout and just – trying to use those hard days as motivation to keep going. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So mm -hmm. thinking about the short term and the long term, what are some goals you have, um, including any financial aspirations you may have, especially after you're you know done with school? Mm -hmm. um, I think short term goals, like for me, I am just trying to be better financially, mm -hmm. especially with like budgeting, saving up because I am going into grad school or hoping to go into yeah. grad school. So that's definitely a big deal for me is, you know, trying to save up or budget myself because once I graduate, I feel like I'm going to be even more on my own than I am now. I feel like I have my parents support a lot right now. So, um, which I'm very grateful for, obviously, because I get a lot of good advice from them. But I think like going into um, like a graduate school, I feel like I should be more independent with those mm -hmm. things and especially saving up for, um, you know, the cost of tuition and everything like that for me, um, kind of just getting ready for that short term. And then long term, I think, you know, obviously after grad school, I would I would love to, you know, be able to own my own property and everything like that. So, you know, I just have to kind of learn as I go, I think, yeah. because that's probably the best way for me to do it and not kind of overload myself with, oh my gosh, I need to do this, 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 and this for, you know, my financial goals, just learning as I go, get, getting through grad school, and then figuring out what I need to do post-grad and everything like that, and kind of be very independent with those things, because I know right now I'm not very independent, and I, I want to get there, because I think that's really important, especially as I graduate college. On a scale of 1 to 10, how important do you believe it is for athletes like yourself to have a good understanding of financial topics? Um, I'd say a nine. I mean, I think especially now in the age of NIL, it's so important that athletes have an understanding of financial topics because, you know, all these different opportunities are coming at us. And I think it's really important to understand, um, you know, how to handle it because I think sometimes people are just like, oh, I'm just going to take all of these different um, opportunities and I don't know what to do with, you know, the income or maybe just um, what the brand is asking for you to do and maybe what money is coming in and what to do with it. So I think 
it's such a new age that that this is an opportunity for us to be able to make an income for our name, image, and likeness. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's extremely important right now for us to know these different um, financial topics. I completely agree. I have to say I was in college when influencing didn't exist, mm -hmm. social media wasn't mm -hmm. around. And, you know, I think about, I think back to those days and it was so important to even just understand how to manage money yeah. because I don't feel like I have mm -hmm. that expertise. And speaking of that, you know, you've definitely had more experience with managing money and, and doing this as a part of your college career. What financial advice would you give your peers if you were to tell them anything today? Um, I would definitely say to budget your money. Um, like you said, you know, managing money is definitely a hard thing as a college mm -hmm. student. And I feel like for me, I've gotten a lot of advice from my parents to, you know, budget either weekly, monthly, whatever works best for you to kind of have an overview of what you need to spend your money on because college students have a lot that they may need to budget for, you know, tuition and book costs and everything for school. And then you also have rent money when you mm -hmm. move into an apartment, um, groceries, all the essentials. And you kind of want to have a little bit of money left over if you want to go, you know, do something with your friends or have, you know, a little bit of free money in your back pocket. So I think budgeting is super important so that you can kind of see like what you're spending money on so that you don't, you know, start carelessly spending because, you know, I've been in that situation before yeah. where, where I go shopping and I'm like, oh, what did I just spend my money on, you know? Um, so I think that's super important, especially for college students, since there seems to be a lot of different places where your money may be going. And I think kind of looking at that as an overview and kind of deciding where the best places to spend money are is super important. Well, Jada, it's been great having you here today and getting to know so much more about yourself. I want to wrap this up with one fun question. If you could describe yourself in three emojis, what would they be? I'd probably say mm, the tongue out emoji, like mm -hmm. when it's like sideways. Um, the guy like dancing when he's like this. Did you see <laughs> <Yeah>. that one? <laughs> um, and then probably just like the hand heart emoji. I love that one. I yeah. feel like there's been a huge rise in popularity. I love that one, that one so, so much. Cute. I use it like 10 times more than the normal ones. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, Jada, it was so awesome having you here. Thank you for sharing more about yourself. Um, we're excited about this partnership and can't wait to do more together. Thank you. I'm so glad I could do this with you guys. Let's do it.